Investing today is more accessible than ever, in large part due to the boom in trading apps that are available. And with that boom in trading apps has come a significant uptick in interest among younger Canadians. Being able to buy and sell stocks on your phone and at the click of a button has drastically leveled the playing field for many when it comes to playing the market. But with that rapid increase in access also comes risk because many of us who use these apps aren't financial professionals. Joining us now to unpack app-based stock trading and the risks associated with it is Rick Wood, Vice President of Client and Advisor Success at Cobalt Securities Limited. Rick, thank you very much for joining us. Julie, thank you very much for having me. Very uh, happy to be here today. Rick, you are often asked by young investors which app to invest with. What would you recommend? Well, first, I guess being a professional advisor, I would always recommend working with an advisor. Um, but I think given how younger people are starting to come into investing and being aware of it, that you know, apps still are very positive for people if they're having a chance to learn about investing and take an interest in it. And I think what's important is, you know, find one that's going to provide you some education, research. Um, some insights about what you're doing and, and what your investing is trying to do, not just looking for virtual confetti if you're going to make a trade and that sort of exciting thing. I think, you know, beware of those apps that really gamify investing and that and look for something that is really about learning about what you're doing and taking an interest. If done right, investing is not gambling. It, it truly is investing. And I think the other thing is, you know, when they market their apps as having no cost or it's free trading or any of those things generally you know when there's no cost to invest and that chances are you're the product mm. young people think that investing is daunting what advice would you give them i don't think it's just young people i think a lot of people think investing is daunting and i think you know we think of everything like, oh, when will I, you know, retire? How long will it take? What is my debt? And and we really get caught up with, you know, the big picture or the enormity of what we're trying to do. But I think if you step back and take small steps, you know, that's the best way for anybody who wants to get into investing. It's okay, wait a minute. How much can I afford to put aside on a monthly basis? You know, can I put a hundred dollars and start there? You know, and I think once you start doing those small steps, as opposed to thinking of the big pictures and where do I invest and all these other things, just get into the habit of saving, understand what a budget is and do that on a monthly basis. You're going to learn, you're going to empower yourself, and it's going to provide you that opportunity to grow, grow your assets grow your education and grow your confidence. So really, I would say start small, put a monthly contribution, and then go from there and see where it takes you. Uh, the greatest journey start with the first step. We see those ads criticizing, I hope you're not investing with mom and dad's advisor. What advice would you give someone who is swayed by the ads and apps and doesn't know which direction to go? I get a kick at those ads. Like, I am my dad's advisor, so I don't know how that really works from that point of view. <laughs> um, but I, I do get a kick out of those ads. And I think what's important to understand is really, you know, there is an advisor for everyone. You know, we all come in different sizes and shapes, different expertise, different ages. Some have hair, some don't have hair, you know, but really there truly is an advisor for everyone. And I think if you're looking at engaging an advisor, you know, you're hiring them to do a job. And so you really need to go through the interview process, you know, get referrals from friends that may be using advisors. And if you are talking to mom and dad, chances are that advisor probably has a team of advisors that they work with that may be younger, that may be in your generation or your age group and those things. So, so really, you know, there really is the advisor for everyone. And, you know, I would suggest just trying out somebody till you find somebody that meets your needs and is going to work with you to achieve your goals. There is so much talk about fees and a lot of those same ads have been highly critical about fees and how much they can erode your investments. What are your thoughts? We have 30 seconds. I love those ads. If you watch as much football as I do, you get to see those ads and then you see the gambling ads and it's no coincidence that probably the two of them are the same. 
they have what I would like to say is a veneer of truth about them in some ways. As an industry, fees do matter. And I think the interesting thing that many people don't understand is fees have actually been coming down in our industry, which is really the exception to what we're seeing if you go to the grocery store or other things like that. Um, investment management fees have been coming down in that. But I think that the real truth to this is in absence of value, fees really matter. And so you want to make sure that whatever you're doing, you know, you're getting value for it. There was a 2016 survey done um, called the Gamma Factor and the Value of Financial Advice. And it found that households that worked with an advisor for at least 15 years had accumulated, and the word is accumulated, almost four times more financial assets than non-advised households. And I think that is really important because what an advisor may do even more than the rate of returns of those things is help people to accumulate that. On the other end, and I think this is even more eye-opening, is the study shows investors who left their advisor between 2010 and 2014 lost over 34% of their assets. Compared to investors who stayed with their advisor, they saw their assets grow by 26%. So there's there's a great saying, the only thing more expensive than hiring a professional is hiring an amateur. <laughs> well, we've run out of time, but thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much, Julie. Have a great day. You too.